Well, in real estate, the old saying goes, it's all about location, location, location. The same could be said, perhaps, for mapping the risk of damage in an earthquake. At least that's the conclusion one might draw from looking at the online earthquake hazard map of Canada from the Institute for Catastrophic Loss Reduction in Toronto. The map rates seismic risk from low to extreme by the first half of our postal codes. So, if you live in Oak Bay, for instance, your risk is extreme, while in nearby parts of Saanich and Victoria, it's only moderate, at least according to this map. But is that right? For a better sense of that, I'm joined by one of the seismologists with the firm that helped create the map. May Claire Bolton is a seismologist with CoreLogic's Equicat in San Francisco. She used to uh, live and work in Victoria, so she knows something about the island, and she's on the phone. May Claire Bolton, good morning. Thank you for having me, Gregor. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Now, we've got you in the Bay Area, but you know uh, Vancouver Island uh, very well, having lived here. Can you give us a sense of how you map uh, the intensity or the severity of risk for a map like this one? Sure. So the map that you're referring to is actually a collaboration, a study that was done a few years ago back in 2003. It was a collaboration between the Institute of Catastrophic Loss Reduction and the company that I work for, CoreLogic Equicat. The study was based on that map specifically. It's based on the CoreLogic Equicat Canada earthquake model. And it's an earthquake risk map, so it's important to understand exactly what that means. It takes into consideration both the earthquake hazards, so things like the kinds of earthquakes that can happen, the range of magnitudes of those earthquakes, and the probability of each of those magnitudes of earthquakes occurring as well, Mm -hmm. as well as things like the underlying soil conditions, because different types of soils will have different responses to earthquakes, soft soil versus rock or clay. But it also takes into account the vulnerability of structures. So this is things like the type of construction, the age of the building, the building code that occurred when your building was built. And because different types of buildings, again, can respond differently to different types of ground motions. Is the building made of wood framed or is it a steel structure? Is it unreinforced masonry structure? But the other thing that really contributes to this as well is the exposure to the risk. Mm. So, for example, there are a lot of areas of southwestern British Columbia that have a very high hazard, but there's nothing there, so the risk is less. If we look at Vancouver Island, for example, you know, the exposure is quite high in Victoria, but if we go out to the west coast of Vancouver Island, where the hazard is extremely high, there's a lot of areas where there's not a lot there. There's not a lot of people there. There's not a lot of towns. There's some beautiful parks. But the risk is lower because the exposure is factored into this as well. well can I ask you quickly about tsunami? Maybe this doesn't uh, uh, doesn't uh, map the risk of that. Is it just strictly earthquake or does it include tsunami? Because I, I did wonder when I saw the west coast of Vancouver Island, uh, uh, if the megathrust earthquake hits and if we're expecting a big tsunami, if, if that's factored in. It actually does not take into consideration tsunami. It's specifically looking at earthquake risk. Okay, good, good, good to clarify. So I, I wonder then, uh, uh, why is it, it? Why does it go? And perhaps this is the the catastrophic injury prevention uh, side of things. But I wonder why it's it's done by postal code prefix rather than uh, you know by municipality or, or or block by block or what have you. Right, that's a great question as well, and it's really important to note that this is done by forward sorting area, so it's the first three digits of your postal code, not even the full postal code. So the perspective of this, I think it was just done um, on an aggregated basis, so a little more higher level as opposed to on a house-by-house basis. So it's really important to, to factor that in when you're looking at this map as well. If you're looking at this saying, what is my house? What is the risk for my specific house? Well, that's pretty hard to say using that specific map because it's the average risk by FSA or forward okay. sorting area. And with averages, you don't always get the full picture. It's a great high-level picture to see what your neighborhood is like or your forward sorting area. But in some areas, in particular, take Vancouver Island, for example, again, because you're there, there are some forward sorting areas that are very large. So to understand, really, I would say for a personal person, if I want to know what is my risk for my home? Understand the qualities of your building. Understand your house. What is your house built of? Is it a wood frame house? Is it a reinforced masonry house? Have you done any um, retrofitting to your property? Mm-hmm. There are a lot of things we can do personally to help ourselves and help our homes be more prepared for earthquakes. Okay, and I, I think it's a good point, and I think I understand it, because if I look at Victoria, you know, most of Oak Bay is in the red area, but you could have a timber frame house on bedrock there, and then, uh, uh, you know, a mile away in Victoria where it's, it's listed as a lower risk, you could have a brick building on uh, clay or something, and presumably, uh, though the map says it's a lower risk, it's actually a higher risk in that individual case, isn't it? 
That is a perfect example. That is absolutely true. So you really need to understand your specific structure, your home, your property that you live or work in, and how that can factor into this as well. Okay, so this is, as you say, a sort of a, a broad level or a higher altitude view. What, what, what kind of uh, purposes do maps like this uh, serve in, in general when we, when we talk about risk prevention and, and, uh, or mitigation and so on? Yeah, I think it gives you a high-level understanding of are you at risk or not. So maybe don't take it as a, I need to understand exactly what my risk is, but more of how can I get an understanding of what my risk might be, and then take a step from there. I'm a huge advocate for earthquake personal preparedness and really understanding what your own risk is. And I've always said that the first step you can take to being prepared for an earthquake is believe it'll happen. And that's a map like this can really give you a first understanding of do I even have a risk? And for everybody in Victoria and the lower mainland and in Vancouver Island, the answer to that is yes. Mm -hmm. Your risk may be slightly less than someone else because if you have done things to mitigate your home and be more prepared, then you are more prepared than someone else. And your risk personally might be a little bit lower. So it gives you that first understanding of, should I be concerned? And then you can try and refine your understanding of that by really understanding your own your own property, your own home, and your own preparedness. Because that factors into this as well. It, it may be out of your scope or, or out of your purview, uh, make clear, but I wonder if you know or if you have any thoughts on whether insurance companies, when trying to determine rates for earthquake uh, insurance, uh, should be using this uh, level of, uh, of map uh, to, to gauge risk and to price earthquake insurance, or if they should be or, or are going uh, to, into more specific detail to, to take into account some of those other factors we discussed. Yeah, that, that's actually a, a perfect question for me. Um, the company that I work for does catastrophe modeling primarily for the insurance industry. So many of the insurance companies across Canada do use catastrophe models um, that we develop, which is based on exactly what I've said, this looking at the, at the risk. So we'll take into consideration the hazard, the vulnerability, and then the exposure at risk as well. So we develop catastrophe models for many places around the world, and Canada is one of them. And insurance companies will use these on a much finer basis in many cases. So it may not be house by house, but it likely will be a finer resolution than forward sorting area. That depends really on the insurance company, the insurance broker specifically. But they do use this type of information, probably a little more refined, to set their, their rates for earthquake insurance. Well, it's very good to hear from you. Thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you very much, Gregory. It was great to speak with you.